well, most anti-Trump hosts, and that is the co-hosts of Liberal Joe, Joe Scarborough, Mika Brzezinski, announcing that the pair attended breakfast, I can't say it with a straight face, at Mar-a-Lago at their request with Donald Trump. Take a look. Joe and I went to Mar-a-Lago to meet personally with President-elect Trump. It was the first time we have seen him in seven years. That we didn't see eye to eye on a lot of issues, and we told him so. What we did agree on was to restart communications. In this meeting, President Trump was tearful, he was upbeat, he seemed interested in finding common ground with Democrats on some of the most divisive issues. And for those asking why we would go speak to the president-elect during such fraught times, especially between us, I guess I would ask back, why wouldn't we? All right, they must have spent three uh, days working on what they were going to say after they had that meeting. All right, a few days ago, these two far-left radical hosts were comparing Trump to Hitler, calling him a racist and sexist and fascist, and now they're kissing his ass, sucking up to him, and having breakfast at Donald Trump's house at their request, really? Mika said the election was literally a battle of life and death. For eight plus long years, these two Trump haters have filled their morning program with anti Trump hysteria, conspiracy theory after conspiracy theory. I could fill an entire three hour show. I could do three nights in a row just playing clips of their insane, over the top, anti Trump rage, hatred, name calling, conspiracies. I am being gracious in the spirit of joy. I'm only going to make you suffer through a very tiny example to make a point. Take a look. I could go back and talk about Nazi Germany, and I do it. I do it without any concerns whatsoever. And if people can't start drawing the parallels, well, you're just stupid, or you have your head in the sand, or you're one of them. It's just staggering that people that I know, people that I grew up with, could still even consider voting for this autocrat. As important as Trump's fascism is and is the lead story every day, his cozying up to uh, dictators, his uh, obsession with Hitler. But this is what voters know right now, that he is killing us. I'm talking about us women. He's killing us. Killing him. A big question tonight is, why would you want to be with the murderer Adolf Hitler, Joseph Stalin, and Mussolini? After all that, I'm not sure why Donald Trump would meet with Joe and Mika. Uh, maybe the president does want to be magnanimous. Maybe he wants to bring the country together. I'm not sure. When I interview him, I will ask him that question. And if I find out ahead of time, I'll bring that answer to you. Now, can anyone just for a second imagine Kamala Harris agreeing to meet with yours truly um, after, if she had, God forbid, thank God you didn't let this happen, if she won the election? After we spent all that time on this show exposing her, in her own words, her radicalism, her extremism, her utter incompetence night after night after night. And for the record, by the way, we invited her on this show. I offered her three hours of radio, one hour of TV during the campaign. Uh, we never heard back. She, and, by, and she's still welcome. You can have three hours of radio, one hour uninterrupted right here on Fox News with me. I don't see that happening. And anyway, it looks like Donald Trump, unlike Kamala and most everyone else on the radical left, is actually serious about trying to unite the country. My unsolicited advice, not that anyone listens to me, I'm just a talk show host, is that, you know, this is a complete waste of time and it's just going to be a matter of how many days until they start calling you a Nazi and a fascist again. But maybe, maybe, just maybe, he's not the monster the state-run legacy media mob portrayed, or is it possible they have become enlightened and the light has gone on? Maybe they have come to the realization that legacy media, the mob that spoke in unison, late-night comedy, every major newspaper, liberal cable news channels, three broadcast channels, is completely dead, and people have lost all trust in them, and they have no influence, there's no celebrity influence, because that was proven to be true this election. Or maybe they're simply, you know, building out relationships any way, anywhere they can 
There have been reports that I have read that MSDNC is for sale. It might be looking for a job one day. Or maybe it's dawning on them that they, they themselves are the ones that have been dividing this country with their over-the-top top conspiracy theories, rage, anger, and hatred, and hyperbole. You know, they're friends in the Democratic Party. Take a look. Now, the country has gone lurching back to the right. I hope it's not going as far right as that which happened in Germany in the 1930s. But you may remember, I forewarned way back in 2018 that I saw this coming. Are you envisioning another Hitler? Is that what you're saying? That's exactly what I'm saying. I said the 1930s in Germany. Yes, you did. Uh, and, of course, uh, and we can go to Mussolini uh, in Italy. Uh, these things... So you don't think uh, that's a little hyperbolic? No, you may think so. All right, thankfully, you, the American people, all of you out there, well, tune this kind of insane rhetoric out. Fewer and fewer Americans believe their lies, but that is not stopping far-left radical Democrats from doubling down on dumb and dumber on X as an act of so-called resistance. The Illinois governor, J.B. Pritzker, is now advertising his state as a refuge for anyone who wants to get a sex change operation. Maybe Kamala herself will pay for it because she won't be in Washington. And she believes so dearly in it, instead of spending your money, she can spend hers. Meanwhile, in the Harvard Crimson, the president of the Institute of Politics wrote, his department can no longer be nonpartisan, vowing to resist the incoming administration. For the record, I would argue they've always been partisan. And get this, the hosts on that hard-hitting ABC News, Disney, Bob Iger show were enraged that Joe and Mika met with Trump. And on MSDNC, Jen Psaki is looking for ways to silence Americans that she disagrees with on social media. Either you think like she thinks or you're going to be silenced. Take a look. One of the things that's changed even since I got involved in politics is um, just the rise of the percentage of people who get their information off of platforms that have no fact checking mechanism and no accountability for having disinformation spread. How does it change? How is it? How is it? How are people held to account? Laws have to change. I, I don't even know the total answer to it. Jen, people don't trust you. They don't trust the network you work for because all of your conspiracy theories have been debunked, all of the lies you told. Nobody bought them, and you keep spewing them day in and day out. Now, despite the panic, the fear-mongering, the hatred, especially targeting Donald Trump's appointments and nominees, this is what is actually going to happen. There's going to be change in Washington, and the border will get secured. And that means criminals, asylum abusers, those murderers, rapists, gang members, cartel members, people with terror ties that are in our country, unvetted, harassed by the illegals, uh, they will all get deported. That's going to happen. And something conservatives, we have said for decades that we want to have happen, is about to happen, too. America's massive, bloated, power-hungry, left-wing bureaucracies will be held accountable. The words limited government will now mean something. Greater freedom will mean something. And hopefully, we can get this done. As we speak, Vivek Ramaswamy, Elon Musk, they're hunting for waste and fraud and abuse through the new Department of Government Efficiency. An op-ed in the Wall Street Journal recommended that they start by tossing the Federal Communications Commission, the FTC, the FEC, the Department of Agriculture, the Postal Service. Yeah, give it to UPS. Give it to, you know, give it, give it to anybody except them. Uh, the Labor Department, HUD, the Interior Department, the VA. Yeah, vets need the money. Give it directly to them. And, of course, the EPA, just to name a few. Now, keep in mind, the Department of Education is also very much on the cutting board. Let the states run it with standards, get woke out of schools, and go back to reading, writing, math, science, and real history. So let's be clear. This doesn't mean important services will go away. 
Democrats, the legacy media mob will lie about what is about to happen. It is going to be an earthquake that has been needed and necessary and discussed for decades in Washington to change the country for the better. And things are not going to be business as usual with a bunch of bureaucrats in Washington. And they will resist themselves and they will do everything in their power to stop Donald Trump from making changes this country has needed for a long time. And by the way, they would just be managed on the local level, the state level, without an army of Washington bureaucrats, highly paid, writing regulations and getting in the way, telling you what refrigerator you can have, what washer and dryer you can have, what car you're allowed to put in your driveway, et cetera, et cetera. Hopefully, the reforms won't stop there. All right, Fleischer had a great idea. He's now arguing a shakeup in the White House press briefing room, you know, giving front row seats to, quote, conservative media outlets, outside the Beltway outlets, podcasters, talk radio reporters, uh, respectable social media influencers, instead of legacy media outlets that hate Donald Trump, and nobody seems to care what they think anyway, and they, all they do is actively work to smear him, as Ari points out. If Trump really wants to change D.C., he needs to change the status quo and unseat the mainstream media. I agree. Meanwhile, a much bigger overhaul is needed at the Pentagon. After falling short of recruiting goals, losing track of hundreds of billions of dollars, letting woke politics interfere with important work of national security, it is time for a massive shakeup at that department. It won't be easy. Military preparedness is now a massive problem uh, when China and Russia have hypersonic technology and we don't. That deficiency needs to be rectified immediately, and we better spend the money to fix it. And breaking, you know, with usual norms, Biden is already trying to, what, box Trump in with his latest authorization in Ukraine, supplying the country last minute out the door with long-range missiles to escalate the, the battle between Russia and Ukraine, so Ukraine can in attack the interior of Russia, knowing Donald Trump wants to end this war, and so Biden is actively undermining Trump's chances of success while simultaneously increasing the odds of a broader conflict in Europe, while also denying help to our biggest ally in the Middle East, Israel. There is no doubt Donald Trump is inheriting an absolute mess from Biden and Harris, both at home and abroad, but you, the American people, elected the guy that is going to go in. He's going to fix what's broken. The left will scream bloody murder. The institutionalists won't like it. It is exactly what he intends to do, and it is exactly what the country voted for. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.